and the Hajj begins that next morning, the day of Arafat, the ninth day of the month of Hajj, is the most important day. And you definitely have to be very patient and on righteous conduct. And God said, no arguing, no fighting. No cussing. Obscenity, I tell the children, that means no cussing and no bad talk. And the biggest test on the heart is with yourself. How do you handle yourself in the crowds of men? So now, from men, they've slept, they get up in early in the morning, they wash up, and they sleep in their ikra. And your head, feet, side by side. The women with the women, and the men have their spots. You get in these big, huge tents, you find a place to rest. And now they wake up, and after the Fajr prayer, they're very serious. And now they move on to Mount Arafat. And they sing in the Talabir as they ride in the buses and walking. It's about um, 14 miles from Mecca, the Holy City Mecca. But they're singing the Talabir again. Here I am, God. Here I come to you to answer your call. And you can hear this motivational answer to the prayer of Prophet Abraham. The people in the millions, anywhere from two, three, four, five, seven to ten million people, they'll tell you two and a half million. But think about the ones that live there going to Hajj all the time. And it's very important. Be nice, be kind, be patient. Their boundaries. Arafat is a mountain top. Can you imagine the crowds are coming and coming and coming all day long, walking up to this mountain? Okay, now they're on Arafat. And when we're on Arafat, you will spend that day in prayer. Pour your heart out to God. You pray, we're taught, you pray for yourself first and then everyone else. This is one time in your life you have to pray for yourself before you pray for other people. Before you pray for your mother, your grandmother. Because you have to remember, we have to remember, we need God's mercy. We need God also. And a lot of times, especially as women, we're begging for prayer and mercy for everyone and we have forgotten ourselves. But we need the mercy. So you pray, you stand and pray. You combine your prayers. You do third prayer and Asr prayer. One in man and two in commas. You rest, you eat. And now you spend all day, but the last 30 minutes before the sunset, you have to leave at sunset. You don't say the uh, evening prayers there. You have to leave. But you stand and face the column. And you pour your heart out to God, asking for mercy, forgiveness, to be saved from the hellfire, to be protected in the grave. Pray for your family, your country, your neighbors, your relatives, your children, the leaders in the country. You pray for peace. Ask God or ask Allah for anything you want. And remember, Allah is big. He's great. There's no end to his mercy nor his bounty. Pour your heart out. You will see many people raise their hands up to the heavens, facing the power. They're crying, begging God, save me from the hell fight. Save my children. Save my parents. Have mercy on my deceased relatives in the grave. Oh, Allah, give me money. Give me a job. Give me a wife. Give me a husband. Make me good. Make me handsome. Make me a nice person. Whatever you want. I want a new automobile. Ask Allah. He is not stingy. You want a million dollars, but maybe you want to be a good person and you want to be saved from the hellfire. You pour your heart out. And if the crowds are very heavy and you can't leave the sunset, you wait and you go to Mustafa. You And the, the pilgrims are very tired, but they're very serious. But this is your chance to talk to God yourself all throughout the Right. But they say on the day of Arafat that God lowers his thrones from the high heavens to the lower heavens. He tells his angels, look at my servants. Come to ask of me so that I may bless them. I may give them what they ask. And so when they go and very serious, very quiet, 
you can see tears streaming down people's face. Some will be singing the Talabia, some will be singing the Tagbeers, the Allah Lakbas, shaking the walls, as the late Dr. Moon, Abdul Munim Shaikh used to say, uh, that Allah says, shake the walls, because the people in the pagan days, they used to praise their fathers and their ancestors, but now we praise God, one God, Allah Lakbar. At Mustafa, this is another time, find your place to, to rest you, and to sleep, because you're out in the desert, and you're going to spend the night out in the desert. You say your prayers, you say Maghreb and Isha. Maghreb is not short, but Isha is short to two uh, rock hides. But you pray and you have to gather your stones at Mustafa because you're going to stone the devil the next morning. So you rest. Some people climb a mountain. Some people go and search bathroom. But there's a mountain. They were saying you go up there to pray on that mountain. Believe me, I don't think I probably climb that mountain because that mountain go up in the sky all night long. You see people going home all night long until the early morning. And um, I don't think he climbed that mountain, but people say he did, but I don't think he did that. It was very rough. But you don't have to do that. Say your prayers and rest. So when you leave Arafat, it, you will be very busy and you're very tired. So after Mustafa, they've gathered 71 stones. Now, they said, in the early morning, you, you make your Fajr Salat, and you're going back to Nina, back to your tent. But we encourage you, you're out ahead of the crowds, go eat. You go to Nina, you stone the biggest jamrock with seven stones. And when you're throwing these stones, you know that it's rock pillows and not the devil him himself. Allah Akbar. But you're declaring that God is greater you asking God to t remove all your bad deeds. Remove if you, you don't want to tell lies. <laughs> yeah. And you see literally people jumping out and thinking these rock pillars are the devil, trying to beat them up. You made me act bad. So already, so that day you stoned the largest one. Now they got to go immediately to Mecca. And I tell everybody from here, go out ahead of the crowds. You will see a sea of humanity. You can't see the streets, the sidewalks, or nothing. Just people coming and coming, praising God, and being obedient. Now they gotta go back to Mecca. And then when you go to Mecca, you gotta do just like you did at the welcome uh, to us. You gotta circle around the Kaaba seven times. You go inside, you enter the Grand Mosque. So they're on the way to Africa in the multitudes, in the crowd. They stop on the black line, stop on the black line. And now they're there, now they're going to begin. There's a box, you raise your right, right hand, and you face the black stone, and a loud black fire, blow a kiss, move quickly. <laughs> and then you go around seven times. Now, subhanAllah, I'm duly loved. Allahu Akbar and la ilaha illallah. Next year you'll be good. Okay. All right. Next year. I do next year. Okay. Subhan Allah. Do the Allah. Allahu Akbar. You move quickly. You can be on the main floor or you can go up to the upper levels. And you begin and end. Okay. And when you come near the station of, of the Yemeni corner, you say, oh God, give me good in this life. Give me good in the year after. Save me from the hell fight. So you stop. Now you go to the station of Ibrahim again. You do the two sunnah prayers. Allah. Then you ask Allah for after you make you do your salam to the right and left, then you ask Allah for anything your heart and mind can conceive of, anything of good. And most important, always remember to be asked to be saved from the shaitan, from the devil, and to be saved from the hell fight. And from that, they go back to Safa Mara. After the station you you go to Safa Mara.